Hey guys, this is a video editorial for the problem stones from the act for a DP contest. I plan on making video editorials for most if not all of the problems after stones. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to get notifications when they get uploaded. In this problem we basically have a pile of k stones and an array A consisting of n integers. Two players are playing a game in which a player can choose an element in A and move that many stones from the pile. Player 1 always goes first. Assuming both players optim play optimally, we have to determine who will win the game. So we can have at most 100 elements in the array and we can have 10 to the power 5 stones in the pile. And our input is given in increasing order but this doesn't really matter. This is a pretty straightforward problem and there aren't really any observations to be made. So there are only basically two things that we can represent as states here and I'm going to write them down. BP of i comma j can player j win with i stones left in the game and every value in this dp array will be 0 or 1 0 denoting that the player can't win and 1 denoting that the player can win and in each move the player will choose an element from x from the array and the player will choose an element x from the array and move that many stones from the pile so let's say that it is player one's turn and we have k stones in the game k is given as input player one is denoted by a zero and player two is denoted by a one so this represents if player 1 can win with exactly k stones left in the game. Now let's see what happens when we remove some amount of stones. Let's say we remove x stones. Now we now this depends on whether player 2 can win with k minus x stones left in the game. If this results in true if, in, if player 2 has some strategy using which he can win if there are exactly k minus, stone, k minus x stones left in the game then we know that if, we, if the first player took x from the array then he cannot win for this particular move. Now we try this for all values present in the array and if it's possible for player 1 to win by removing some amount of stones at the start of the game then we print player 1 otherwise we'll print player 2 so there are n options for player 1 we can um, this can go to This is if we remove the first element. We can remove the second element. And so on. And then from here, after this, it's player one's turn again. Where he can remove a certain amount of elements. Maybe player one removes A of one element or player one can remove A of three elements or something. The game continues like this. So if this returns true, then it means that through this move player one can't win the game. But let's say this returns false. This means that 
player two could not win the game from some optimal player this means that player one can win the game so what we want what we actually want to do is we want to try removing all the valid stones that we can remove and if any of those um if any of those recurs down and finally return true it means that player one can win now there's actually a small observation here which isn't really necessary but you can actually remove this state because at each level it's either player zero or player one and they all they always alternate in turns so we can never have dp of k comma one because we know that player zero, uh, player one will always start the game so we can actually just remove that state and this still works the same we know that player one starts so there will exactly be k stones in the game when player one starts okay so now that we have a state let me write down the transition more concretely we basically loop over every element in the array and we say that dp of i or equals this basically means that if any of these dp of i minus x x or one return true then this value will be set to true now what this is basically doing is this is this is let's say this is player zero's turn player one's turn and this is player two's turn if player two wins the game then this player then the first player can't win the game so we flip that value if this returns true um, it will return one one x or one will be zero which means false according to our state and dp i or equal zero it will remain one if dp i is already one or it will become zero if it's zero it will remain zero then and we basically do this xor operation because the verdict for dp of i is the opposite of the verdict for dp of i minus x and it's pretty much this we continue this process with our base case of dp of 0 is equal to 0 this basically means that it's some player's turn and there are exactly zero stones left in the game since that player can't make a turn he cannot win for sure so the answer is zero and let's look at some recursive and iterative code for this now so this is basically taking the input and this is the recursive solution so because it's a recursive solution i've initially set every value in the dp array to minus one and this is a function which takes in the number of stones left in the game so we know that player one goes first and the dp state is what i described earlier so if this function returns true it means that player one can win and we'll print first otherwise we'll just print second now let's see what happens inside a recursive function so this is a base case if we have zero stones in the game then that player can't make a move and that player will lose so we return zero now this is basically the memoization if we have already seen this state then we return the answer without computing anything else 
int res it basically stores if this player can win this game at this turn this is an additional check we're performing because we can't remove an amount of stones that's not in the game so basically if a of i is greater than the number of stones present in the game this is an invalid move and we can't do that that's why we have to perform this check now this is the result or equals f of stones minus ai x or 1 let's say this returned true then true x or 1 will give us false and result or equals false will remain result but let's say that this returned false it means that th that player could not win the game which means that the current player can win the game so false x or 1 will give us true and result or equals true will give us true which is also 1 after we've calculated that we basically return that value while setting dp of stones to the result so we fill that state with the result we have and after this is done we basically print the answer so our states we are storing the number of stones left in the game which is k which can be as high as 10 to the power 5 and our transitions we are we have so for every state we have n transitions where n is the number of elements in the array n can be as large as 100 so in the worst case our final complexity is transitions multiplied by the states which is o of n into k which is about 10 to the power 7 in the worst case and will fit under one second this is the iterative version of the code so again we're taking input this is the input array and after that we declare our dp array which is this and it's currently filled with zeros which handles our base case as well which is dp of zeros equal to zero after that we loop over the number of stones in the game and then we loop over the elements in this array now this is the same check we performed in the recursive function we can't remove an amount of stones that's not present in the game after that we try to update this state and make it one so if dp of k is equal to 1, then we'll print first, otherwise we'll print second. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe, share and like the video. If you want me to cover some particular problem first, then you can write it in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next one.